you. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's, um, it's very good that you, many of you could be here today. Um, I'm going to describe what we'll be doing in the um, human enhancement session tomorrow and to tell you a little bit about the results that we found in human enhancement for Sienna. Um, and of course, I also need to start with a definition. I think, in fact, um, the, the definition of human enhancement might be even more controversial, um, not that it's a competition, uh, purely because of that comparative element in the sense that it's not simply a technology uh, against which, which we draw um, conclusions about humans in, in abstract, but we are directly uh, comparing uh, what it is to be human in one case with what it is to be human in another. Uh, so uh, we offer a definition here that we know is going to raise as many questions as it answers. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we in Sienna, plus our stakeholders, think it's important that we have something to start from when we do this research and these, offer these proposals. So what we suggest in Sienna is that uh, human enhancement is a modification aimed at improving human performance. So this is to distinguish enhancement from you know, more general tools that people use in their everyday lives. Uh, and we also suggest that it includes um, that uh, an improvement is brought about by science-based or and or technology-based interventions in or on the human body. Uh, and you can see that that um, uh, definition is uh, located in one of our deliverables, D3.1. Uh, and you can find uh, that and other deliverables on our um, website. I think Rowena put it in the chat, in fact, so you can click there. Um, just to give you an outlook of what tomorrow will look like, we start uh, early in the morning. Uh, we start with a presentation on human enhancement ethical analysis. So that will cover some of the early work we did, literature reviews, uh, surveying the field, uh, and so on. Um, and then after a short break, uh, my colleague Conrad and I will discuss some of our proposals, specifically some ethics guidelines uh, and some regulatory and policy recommendations. Uh, and finally, we end with a panel discussion that looks at future strategies for human enhancement. And we have some fantastic speakers joining us in that panel. Uh, just to give you a snapshot of the kinds of deliverables you can find on our website, uh, you can see here the first uh, four, in fact, cover things like our state of the art review, our ethical analysis, uh, as well as those uh, public views and qualitative research that were mentioned by the previous two speakers. Uh, and then, of course, we have also our proposals, proposals for an ethical framework and then some methods for promoting ethics. Um, we'll go into these in more detail tomorrow, but just to give you a sense of what to expect um, in that early work, what we did was to um, uh, group human enhancement according to some categories. Um, and what uh, those authors suggested is that we can consider human enhancement in terms of uh, subfields that include cognitive enhancement, which covers things like intelligence and memory, uh, and of course then physical enhancement, which covers performance, endurance, speed, dexterity, uh, strength, and so on. Then we have the effective and emotion enhancement uh, category, which um, focuses more on you know, technologies or interventions that help to improve mood or to increase um, control of disposition or even to try and change disposition. Uh, moral enhancement covers those interventions that seek to correct decision making or the behaviours that follow from that decision making, while cosmetic enhancement and, and longevity enhancement, I suspect, are probably a little uh, better known. Uh, they cover things like uh, the changes people make to their bodies and their appearance or the um, interventions to either slow or prevent ageing. These categories, of course, overlap uh, in, insofar as some technologies and interventions may cover more than just one or, or the other, may co cover several, in fact. Um, but what we tried to do was to offer groupings that allow us to talk about the ethical issues as they occur for different technologies. Here are just some examples. Um, top left hand corner, you've got an exoskeleton being used by a soldier uh, to improve things like strength uh, and um, endurance. Uh, top right hand corner, you have uh, prosthetics that, uh, sorry, prostheses that uh, can either amend or augment um, dexterity or could be used to replace a missing limb. Bottom left, you have a bionic eye, which can, uh, in theory, replace uh, lost eyesight or can be adapted to augment existing eyesight. 
And then you have a, a brain cap or a skull cap, it has many names, which uh, doesn't require implantation in, in the brain, but which can pick up on uh, uh, brain signals and uh, translate that into uh, control of a device such as a computer or prosthesis. Uh, then, of course, you have gene genetic augmentation, uh, um, human uh, genome uh, enhancement, for example, which will be discussed uh, straight after this session. So stick around for that. Then, uh, of course, you have pills, which can be taken for all kinds of different um, uh, enhancements, including um, for mood, as I described earlier. And finally, wearables, which can do things like uh, track your um, your um, pulse and your and your and your um, heat. Uh, emanating from the body and offer some sorts of analysis regarding your emotional well-being and so on. Um, the reason that I put this kind of information next is because I want to say we also need to be careful what we um, what we think about in terms of enhancement, by which I mean that it's not always clear whether something is an enhancement or whether it will do exactly what people claim it will. So for instance, uh, the top of the screen, you'll see Neuralink, which is Elon Musk's uh, um, company, which seeks to uh, create a neural implant to control a computer or a mobile device. Um, how successful this will be, in what stage um, the company are at, is of course going to be affected by, you know, what benefit the company will have by promoting and even potentially hyping their product. Uh, meanwhile, back in December, it was announced that an ethics committee had given permission to um, some researchers to develop technologies to enhance soldiers. Um, and I, again, would express some caution here because sometimes it's not, um, you know, what, what, what happens in an ethics committee isn't always accurately represented by those who are outside it. Some other things to bear in mind, human enhancement is controversial in so far as it can polarize people. Um, here are some terms you may hear frequently, pro-enhancement people, sometimes called transhumanists, um, tend to be those who prioritize things like choice, autonomy, and the benefits of an enhancement. And then you have another side of, of people who, call, who we should rightly call enhancement critics, but are sometimes called bioconservatives. Um, and they tend to focus on risks and principles, you know, sort of what's affected, what, what uh, is affected in terms of human identity and values and so on. What we found in Siena when we spoke with stakeholders is that in fact, it's quite um, unhelpful to polarize people in this way. Lots of people occupy middle ground and they may change their views more or less depending on the technology, depending on the intervention, depending on what's at stake. Um, and of course, it's worth bearing in mind that people who are critical of enhancements tend not to call themselves bioconservatives, but might be called that by others, and that too brings its problem. So our four proposals that we'll be discussing tomorrow uh, cover things like ethics guidelines for human enhancement that we've been developing. We've also pr prepared some guidance for research funding and research ethics assessment. We also offer proposals for a European expert body that we suggest could assess and guide social, ethical, and regulatory aspects of human enhancement. And finally, we offer some proposals for uh, opening a debate on the status of human enhancement in relation to the field of medicine. The reason uh, we, we do this is because uh, what we find is that there are some ethical values and principles which are tied up with human enhancement that aren't always um, given sufficient time uh, in, in the development of these technologies. So I've listed some of them here. They include things like informed consent and uh, concerns about responsibility. These are very well, uh, well known, of course, but also we cover things like well-being and integrity and um, you know, concepts of justice and equality. Because when it comes to human enhancement, um, we, we are facing the possibility of quite major changes. And we suggest that we need to think about those issues early uh, and with appropriate guidance. If you're interested to join us tomorrow, I'd like to leave you with some questions to consider. Uh, for instance, when you're thinking about a technology and its enhancement potential, potential it's worth thinking about what, uh, what the aims of the technology would be, as well as what might be the possible outcomes, for example, to make someone well or to make someone better and what those terms mean. Um, and of course, they are deeply problematic in lots of ways. We also need to think about the effects that an enhancement has on human identity, on ideals, on values, and all of the things that this um, can, can involve, including the cultural and uh, sociological differences tied up with those terms. 
you also need to think about what might be improved, but also what might be lost in Siena. We're trying to offer a sort of balanced view which takes into account the widest variety of stakeholders and how those risks and benefits would be measured, changes according to the, the variety of those views. Um, and finally, what potential there is for choice in all of this. If a technology Im impacts on someone's ability to choose, then may, might they then lose the ability to reject a technology that they've previous, previously embraced.